comment, like, and subscribe. What's up, YouTube? So if you were paying attention to the last video, I'm out driving the Mach 1 around and it's done fabulous with the 6R80. I made a few more tweaks in the Quick 6 controller just to fine tune it, but other than that, it's been doing really well. Uh, if you were paying attention though, on my pillar, I have a boost and a fuel pressure gauge. And while the boost gauge goes up and stays up, which is good, the fuel pressure gauge actually wasn't going up, actually it was going down. And after I watched the video myself, I was like, oh man, that seems to be a pretty big problem here. So I went out, anything three quarter throttle, it was holding pressure 40 to 60 pounds. As soon as you go wide open throttle, it was dropping fuel pressure. When I say dropping, it was dropping down to about 20, 25 pounds of fuel pressure. That is no bueno. So first thing I did was open the trunk. It's got two fuses and two different relays that feed each pump individually. Fuses were good, both relays were good, but I went ahead, pulled the relays out and I swapped two other relays in it and went out and got on it and it still was doing it. So I'm like, you know what? I've been putting off an issue for a while and that is the feed line. So I went ahead and bought, this is number 10 PTFE line with a big 10 micron filter and all the necessary fittings. And what I'm going to do, this car already has a return system built into it. It's got the Cobra tank with the four hat and the double pumps. They're like the 465 pumps in it, which should be fine for this combination. However, I'm still running the factory filter and feed lines and i know that's a restriction especially e85 these paper filters start to deteriorate so i've got a stainless filter to replace that in inline and you can see my return line here from the front that's number six now i'm going to change out the feed line we're going to go number 10 from the tank i'm going to put the aftermarket filter here we're going to run number 10 all the way up here to the front and then we're going to go into the factory fuel rail. I've got adapters coming. This is going from a 10 to an 8. And then on the rail, it's actually an 8 adapter that's coming. But I just want to show you, this is the nice filter. And this is it, Evil Energy. I like their stuff. It's really good quality. And this is the Evil Energy uh, number 10, 20-foot length PTFE. So stay tuned, I'm gonna put this line on it and see if that actually helps. It's gonna help with the volume and the pressure. Um, what I think's happening could be a couple things. One is I just can't get enough volume to the front and that's what's causing it to lose pressure. Two, I feel like it could be drawing more voltage. And of course, with the pumps at lower voltage, it's not gonna pump as hard. So for example, if there are 13 volts to the pumps, they're gonna pump a lot more volume than they are at, let's say 11, 12 volts. So I verify my alternator is good, but I may have to figure out is something dropping in the voltage. So I'll be able to do that under more testing. But for now, I'm addressing the elephant in the room, which is a bigger feed line and a stainless steel filter just for E85. And we'll see what comes up from that. All right, well, that escalated quickly. And I think earlier I had said something about the four hat on it, but this is actually the Lethal Performance Division X, which was the hot stuff back in the day. I've already changed this fitting. This is a screw in the number 10 fitting on here, goes right into the hat, no problem. So that was easy. And I took my stock one off. Here's the stock one. It was going to the stock line there. I just pulled it off, but it goes to the stock line and filter. See there? I'm not gonna use that anymore, that's trash. But the way I am and how things escalate so quick, quickly around here, I'm like, you know, it's such a pain to get to this point. Why not just go ahead and pull the hat all the way off and just change the pumps? You know what I mean? Why not? It's just cheap insurance. They're about $120 a piece for the Hellcat pumps, which are a little more than what I've got in here. So uh, I'm going to put two new Hellcat pumps in here in socks, pull this hat off, put them in. And then when I go to put everything back together, with the bigger line, I'll have a little bit more volume in the pumps. I'll have a bigger feed line, and then we'll see how that does. Pull the fender liner down so I could put my new line, run it where I wanted, so it didn't have a lot of hard kinks in it. It follows the factory fuel line, basically up, around, over, and through there. And right now it's just literally hanging down because I got to terminate the end. So once I terminate the end, 
then it runs up and over right here to the factory location where the filter was and I modified it, been a few tabs out of the way. So my new filter fits right there. I already made the line here that goes to the gas tank. To make it easy, I'll probably unbolt that from here, put it back on the actual tank, and then when I raise it up, I'll be able to just tighten that up. So while I got the fender liner out, it's a great time to get right here to the tube for the mass air meter and change this filter out. Now, if you ain't had a filter like this, you tripping. All right, redo, redo. So now's a good time to go out here and clean this filter out. Where it's been inside the wheel well here. And if you've never seen one like that, that thing is massive. Look at that. All the airflow. So if you look through it, I have washed it. You see light all the way through it, no problem, which is great. Clean and good to go. All right, just got my fuel rail line adapter here. And you'll notice snap in with the little ring there and that goes to a number eight and i need to get to a number 10 so first thing you need to do is get this fitting this is the part number one five one two five it's the adapter and a spring lock to dash eight and then you need to get this evil energy part number here and it's a female number eight to a 10 male flare reducer adapter it looks like this. There we go. So these are the 465 liter per hour pumps. And a couple things here. I'll get that drain back out of there. I took off to give me more room. If you look down in here you can see it does have a baffle to keep fuel contained this is the cobra style tank so you'll notice I finally got the old pumps out here you can see it says ti on them 267s all right so the two pumps just came in ti automotive you can see there where it says they are the 525 liter per hours and here it is on the side 285 so these are the new ones these are the old what i told you 267s yep 267 and they look very very similar on the outside same uh connector i think it's called a delphi connector so it plugs right in all right just show you i got it mocked up in here i don't have my submersible line I had to order someone to be here tomorrow so i have to put a pin in this so tomorrow but anyway so you've actually moved the pump around line it up in there like that right but i had to trim the nipple because it was touching it was making contact here and it wasn't quite fully seating here and you want a certain distance here from the filter to the bottom of this bracket now let me show you what that means you need this much clearance 1.75 to 1.87 inch from the bottom of the basket there to the filter so that's your range you don't want it any deeper because it's going to hit and when you go to tighten everything down it's going to crush your filter you don't want it too shallow because then it doesn't pick up what's in the bottom of the tank but this is the sweet spot so i shoot for 1.75 to 1.8 somewhere in that range and i've never had a problem but to get that distance you need to make sure that the nipple clears so you can seat it because if not the pump sticks down too far all right got my pumps mounted Finally got in my little bit of submergible hose here, which wasn't much, but it finally came in. I want some of these new clamps to clamp it all down. So you don't need but just little pieces here, but you want to trim them enough that the pumps send all the way down flush. All right, got the pumps back in, got the tank up under the car, hooked up the battery, see the lights on. And I'm getting ready to go in here now and basically turn the key on to see just gonna prime the pumps and if I got any leaks so let's see yeah pumps are primed putting out about 50 pounds wow that's awesome no vacuum 50 it means I gotta adjust it down it means those pumps and lines are working really well now let's see any quick leaks under here 
nope you can hear it going through the filter that's nice and dry that's nice and dry too disconnected with 52 pounds of fuel pressure so I'm gonna adjust that right here now we're at 50 so I'm gonna adjust it some more to get it down about 44 45 pounds and we'll see how that goes all right now it's set, it's exactly 44 pounds with no vacuum. Now we're gonna hook our vacuum back up. pressure holding steady and uh, it's showing just under a quarter tank because I didn't have but maybe two or three gallons in my cell in my uh, gas jug so I'm gonna go up here and fill it up with some sheets E85 flex fuel and then we'll start ramping in some boosts and see what the fuel pressure does so far so good so I just pulled up a sheet filled up with ethanol you can see my gas gauge there it's all the way full and literally as I was doing that the local police just pulled a Dodge Charger. I didn't see what he was doing unless he was speeding through town, but not a good way to start your Sunday. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait to get to the track. This thing is going to be a rocket ship. 